Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today we're checking out General Chaos for the Sega Genesis. Released in 1994, this was developed by Game Refugee Incorporated and published by EA. It's a Sega Genesis exclusive. Ow! It is worth it every time. Anyway, this is kind of a real-time strategy game for the system which... Let's be honest, for the time, not many consoles had these. Let's see how this worked out. The first thing you're going to notice with this game is it has a very unique style. And be prepared to hear Jim and I say that many times throughout this video, because everything in this game is unique. So not to go too far into the gameplay, in each level, you break down into a specific war zone that can be a forest, it can be a swamp, it can be a desert, a city, and they all look kind of similar, but they add in enough little details that they ver vary pretty well. And then when it comes to your squad itself, all five sprites look pretty unique from each other. And the thing that impresses us the most is the animation. You have little details when you fire guns, you'll see smoke coming from the cannon, the explosions look good when you call in a medic, there's just a lot going on on the screen, and when the game is running, the most odd thing happens that slowdown can occur at random times. You would think it's when it's full 5-on-5 five five and the action is the most, but sometimes we've just had 2-on-2 two two and it can happen then. So it's kind of random, can get a little bit annoying, but all in all, you kind of almost welcome it because if it's going too fast, you almost can't pay attention to everything that's going on. Some would say there's just so much chaos going on. I get it! While the graphics themselves may not blow us away, we did appreciate the style they went for. So when it comes to our scores, I gave it a 7 and Jim gave it a 6. And as far as beer, I'm just going to add 2. For how chaotic it is. I don't get it. Well, see, it's called General Chaos. Because there's this bunch of General Chaos, and you can be generals and be chaotic. What? I, I was too busy fapping. I wasn't paying attention. God damn it! What are we playing? Ah, uh, the sound. Unfortunately, this is probably the weakest part of the game. You have an intro song that you get while the levels are loading up and in the very beginning. And that's really the main music of the game. Because while you're playing the actual levels themselves and the battles... You don't have any music. The sounds of the weapons all sound different from each other, which is good. And you get the grunts as you're in close combat and fighting each other, which is fine. And outside of that, maybe the little snare drum ditty that they have for the training modes. There's really not that much here, so we couldn't give it more than fours. And when it comes to beers, yeah, I'll just give it one beer for, um, why no music? I don't get it. The control is an area where... Like most games Jim and I review, you really need to play to understand, but let me try and explain it the best way I can. If you've ever played a real-time strategy game on a console, you know in general they can have problems. The biggest issue with this game is the action becomes so frenetic that you are going to keep clicking your guys out into the middle of the field on the other side until you really learn to control your squad the right way and you're going to needlessly get your guys killed, you're going to accidentally sh throw your cannon guy way too close where he's not really optimal for the battle and it just gets nuts. Granted, you can still have fun with it, but that was one thing I kind of had an issue with, and the inability to swap through your squad guys, you kind of have to use the next in line before you can move on to the next one. I had a little bit of an issue with that. But other than that... Brian! Yes? Brian, you gotta talk about when you're in the commando mode and you can control two guys instead of the four and you have more control. I was getting there, blah, blah! Fuck! <laughs> so anyway... The one thing that will happen in the middle of any battle is you can engage in a fight. And apparently every single time I was in one of these games, that happened all the time. And it's basically punch, block, or kick. Really, you could just mash the buttons and you're going to win 90% of the time until the asshole AI decides he's really good at blocking. Or he does this little move where he'll shoot you when it's over. I fucking hate that move, by the way. Other than that... Like Jim brought up, when you're the commandos, you have full control of your guy. You happy now, prick? Um, technically, it's one guy at a time. I hate him. I hate him so goddamn much. Ha! But, with the commandos, you will notice a lot more control, and you are just limiting the number of guys you have. So, 
it is something that just takes a lot of time to get used to, and if this is a game you're just going to try and pick up and play real quick, you may either want to play against a buddy who's never played this as well, or put it on easy. So when it comes to scores, I gave it a 4, Jim gave it a 5. When it comes to beers, I'm going to add 3. 1, for just that annoyance of not being able to swap between your squad while you're in the middle of a battle. Two, for that goddamn asshole who shoots you when he goes down. And three, for Jim being a blub blub. All right, so the gameplay. Well, let's just retread old water here because, like we said, it's a real-time strategy game. The main goal of the game, well, the campaign, if you want to call it that, is you play as General Chaos, and you're trying to beat the armies of General Havoc and take over their capital. To do that, you go through a pretty decent-sized map with lots of different battles on each one. And to give the game credit, every battle is, in a sense, unique. Every stage layout's different, and nothing really repeats. Also thrown throughout there will be special objectives, like blowing up a power plant, or a train, or protecting things. And winning these gets you more points. Why do you want more points? Because points give you medics. And medics are so goddamn important in this game. Basically, when you have a guy who's down, you can put your cursor over him, call for a medic, and he comes back to life. To add also to the strategy is the fact that your team compositions can really make or break your rounds. Sometimes we'll have too many close combat guys, but they do way more damage. Some guys can do insta-kills. I mean, my personal favorite is using five gunners because it's just so versatile, but can't do that all the time because you have certain set squad formations that you cycle through. There's just a whole bunch of ways to go about these battles, which adds to the fun. Every guy has their advantages and disadvantages, and... Truth be told, this game can get hard fast, because you can play through the game once, and it'll give you the option to continue. So if you say no, game's over, and you win. Or if you say yes, you go through a whole new set of rounds. And these go for a couple times before the end end of the game, even though there's only one real ending. But holy shit, the difficulty curve? Insane. And you gotta be on your toes to get through the second and third levels. Long story short, this is a damn fun strategy game, even if the control makes it a little flawed, so we both gave it 7s. Oh, 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 one more thing. If you have a multi-tap, you can actually play with up to four players at once. So, that's actually really cool. And when it comes to beer, I'm just gonna add one beer for, oh, just being a real-time strategy game in the 16-bit era. Well, the originality is an area that really impressed Jim and I because... Jim mentioned it multiple times, but how many real-time strategies can you think of for any system at this point in time? I mean, you might have had a few, including... Herzog's Y, Dune 2, um, Act Razor, the first one. Yeah, those nerdy titles. Hey! <laughs> but none of them had the unique style and just the overall humor that this game did. And one thing neither of us mentioned up to this point, there are some really interesting mechanics that can happen during battle, like your gun can jam. Or if you're the flamethrower guy and you go, you fall into the water, he starts shooting water bubbles out of there. It was little touches like this that, you know, everything, no matter how strategic you are in these battles, it really could just come down to your guy ran out of bullets or that goddamn mechanic where they shoot you after a fight. So there is an element of random luck in this, and it's something that would be emulated later on with other games, but we just appreciate it and never really experienced anything like this till this point. So we both gave it sevens. We give it all the credit in the world, and as far as beer, I'm not going to add any. Alright, when it comes to replayability, you have the different multiplayer modes, you can go through the campaign, you can do the four players as we've mentioned before, you can go against a buddy. There's a lot of options here. But to be honest, it's kind of the same thing over and over again, no matter what you choose. All right, let's put it this way. I find the game fun as shit, and it's one that I do go back to a lot. But from a technical standpoint, I really don't think there's that much here to bring you back if you're not a fan of the genre. So trying to keep it as fair as we can, we both gave it fives. And when it comes to beer, yeah, you know what? I'll just add one beer for using a multi-tap. Good on them. So overall, full disclosure, this was a game Jim grew up with. He talked about a lot. We've been friends a long time. I just played it now to review this game, and I do really appreciate it, but really, if you got that nostalgia with it, you're going to think much higher of this game than it technically deserves, but it's still a lot of fun, and if you're playing with a buddy, especially if you're drunk like us, you're going to have a lot of fun with it, and it can get frustrating, 
but it's worth a try if you can find it. When it comes to the scores, I gave it a 6, Jim gave it a 7. Once again, if you don't really like real-time strategy games and you're not willing to invest at least an hour to really perfecting those controls, then this probably isn't the one for you. When we combine all of our scores together, it rounds out to a 5.8. Now for Gemini, that seems a little low, but at the same time, given its flaws with the sound and its control, it's understandable. Still, it's one you may want to consider in the future. When it comes to beer pairing, you know I had to pick something a little more unique for such a crazy ass game. So I went with the Chaos Mountain Brewing Company's Agents of Chaos. Of course, the name helped me pick this beer, but this is actually a really good Belgian Strong Dark Ale. Comes in at 10%, you're gonna get a whole lot of flavors. I personally picked up mostly banana, some cherry, and a whole lot of spice. And luckily for me, since I live close enough to Virginia, this is one I've been able to try. Now I don't know how far out they distribute this beer, but if you're lucky enough, pick up a bottle or a growler and have yourself a good time. There's just a whole lot going on with this beer, so it's very suitable for this game. But remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time guys, cheers.